starting this week, uh, we will study uh, our famous teacher and our our big brother, Saint Paul. Okay, uh, beginning with uh, around eight lectures, uh, we will be dealing with his early life, early life. So I just uh, put it down right here, the early life of Paul. That is a subject. Under the subject, uh, I will be teaching you eight lectures. Okay, eight lectures. Now, let's go over there. Paul, Paul is very, uh, very famous man in the Bible, especially in the New Testament. Okay, reason why that he wrote half of the New Testament. He wrote the half of the New Testament. Just write it down there. I don't have that information uh, on the board here. Half of the New Testament, which he wrote, not only that, he developed the Christian doctrine. He developed Christian doctrine uh, in a systematic and academic ways. Uh, Compared to other writers, he is the only one God allowed to develop the theology in a systematic and academic way. Now, it was God's plan uh, in order to have him such an academic person, it was God's divine plan. Later we have found out that. Now, here, Paul, he did not know the first 30 years of his life that he would be such a useful servant of God. He didn't know that. Actually, he was anti-churchman. And also he was an anti-Christianity, anti-Christian man in the first 30 years. So as we now are studying the life of uh, Paul, that particular life will apply to my life and your life. Those who are studying uh, this lecture, uh, it will be your life, so which we will be step by step study. Uh, we'll be studying throughout his life, and then it, that will be applicable to your life. Okay. Later, he found out that Paul. Okay. He said. He found out that, oh, like Jeremiah 1.5. You know, Jesus spoke to Jeremiah, I knew you, I foreknew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. In other words, I pre-assigned you as my servant before you were formed in your mother's womb. What an amazing uh, discovery here. In the same way, here, Anania, Anania in Acts chapter 9, 15, Jesus told Anania that that man now is persecuting your people. I preordained him as my servant 
although he is now strong persecutor to Christians and churches. Then later in Galatians 1.15, Paul confessed himself that, wow, I was preordained when even before in or when I was in my mother's womb, which I now come to realize that. So it's a Calvinistic approach. Okay? But he did not know that. Later he knew that. Later he knew that. So it applies to all of you. Our Pastor Bong, Pastor Joel, Pastor Maju, you were born in different religion background, family, from Christianity. See, now you are all pastors. What an amazing, you know, consequences right here. Okay, that is applicable to the life of Paul, which we will uh, see, you know, how God designed in the life of Paul. Okay, so this time lecture one is, who is Paul before conversion? That means what? He was born, born 85, and conversion was 835. So it's a 30 years life. Okay? When you teach, always put this time information. Verse 5 and 35. Okay? So we will study this period in this lecture one. Now here, he was born in 85. Okay? Where? His hometown is Tarsus. Tarsus is the province of Cilicia. Tarsus is just right here. This is Israel. This is Antioch. This is Antioch. Means over here is Syria. Syria over here. And over here, there's another province, is Cilicia. Cilicia is this. Cilicia, okay? Cilicia, in the Cilicia, that's a major city, is called Tarsus. Tarsus. So is it now, today's southwestern part of Turkey, okay? Adjacent to Syria. Adjacent to adjacent means next to Syria, neighboring Syria. You know, over here is island called Cyprus. Cyprus over here. This is Israel. You can see this is Cilicia province of Cilicia in Tarsus. Next to the Antioch, this is Syria. Over here is Israel. At the southern island is called Cyprus. Okay, now where was he born? He was born in Tarsus. Okay, province of Cilicia. Where in the Bible it says, so don't forget the Bible. I always provide you Bible references. Okay, Bible references, always. You teachers, always people will ask you. Acts chapter 9, 11 says so. And also, Acts chapter 22, 3 teaches. Only two Bible references, okay, providing us the city. He was born in Tarsus, Cilicia. That's the resources. Now, of course, because this is not the land of Israel, his parents were immigrant. A Jewish man, but diaspora, that's an immigrant, means diaspora. OK? 
Okay? Immigrant parents. Like all of you are now living in Korea as a diaspora. Okay? Now, your children, your children saw like who? St. Paul. Okay? You will know how God will use your children. Now, Tarsus is a very famous city. During the time of, uh, you know, first century, is well known as an education city within the Roman Empire. You see, that city, that area, the Roman Empire, okay? A, and also, the, the school name, University of Tarsus, University of Tarsus was very well known uh, according to the resources that I have uh, studied, okay? Within the Roman Empire, the University of Tarsus was a very well-known uh, university. So, I, we presume that Paul graduated University of Tarsus, okay? Because that was his hometown. And after his graduation, his parents sent him to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh, under the very famous top scholar, Kamaliel. Kamaliel. Say, who is Kamaliel? He is a top Judaic law scholar in Israel. So, Paul addressed uh, to Jewish leaders when he witnessed Jesus Christ. Okay? In Acts 23, Verse 3, Acts 22, verse 3, he said to top Israeli leaders that, you people, I am from Tarsus, which means <clears throat> very highly educated person. Not only that, I am a disciple of Gamaliel, he said that. Okay? That really... Uh, Exhort, okay, his position high uh, to the Jewish top leaders and community leaders and religion leaders. That wow, he tried to brag himself, okay, that I am such a background person. So don't. Don't look down on me. Okay? Now I'm a Christian and, and a servant of Jesus, but my past educational background is this. No one could say, wow. No one could say, wow, you, you know, you cannot say, you cannot look down on me. I am a very proud man. Uh, in the context of, you know, the Jewish, the Jewish community. <clears throat> that says that. Are you with me? See, I can see all of you, many of you. Our, our, our pastor Joel, he, in a, within the Hindu, you know, culture, he is a son of, uh, you know, a Hindu, uh, Hindu Priest, okay, and also in Hindu community, your 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 tribal background is what your highest one. What what they call Brahman, Brahman. yeah, Brahman tribe. This is highest tribe. You 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 would not know how high that tribe would be when you are in that community. We know, I know. Okay, he is just like a, a you know very much the, like the Saint Paul within his, his own culture and diaspora now. So your children will be specially ordained by our Lord Jesus. That is my estimation and my hope. Okay, now 
His name, as you know that, his name. It's sometimes the Bible says two names, Saul and Paul. See? Now, I will give you that information. Saul, in actually, Saul. Okay, Saul. In English, we pronounce it as Saul. But in, in Jewish, Saul. You see, Saul. Okay? So, Bible has that reference, Paul's reference as a soul here, Acts chapter 7, 58, and Acts chapter 8, 3, and Acts chapter 9, 4, and 11. At least one, two, three, four occasions. Okay? His name was Saul. Okay, so don't forget, that I try to give you all information, biblical references. And later, when he took the missionary trip, okay, missionary trip in the mission field, Luke, who, who was a writer of Book of Acts, okay, Luke, who happens to be a gentle man as well. Okay. Luke called him Paul. Paul is an English expression, but actually Paul. 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 Or in Greek, Paulos. Okay. And Acts, this is the first time in the Bible his name was changed. Okay. In the mission field, Paul, Saul name changed it to Paul. Because Paul is Greek name. See? Now, it will be a very common among the uh, Hebrew speaking, Hebrew speaking peoples, his name Saul. Well, everybody calls their, their name Saul. But now, in the middle of the Gentile community, which is a mission field, Saul would not be acceptable. So you have to change your name to Greek name. So the Greek name is Paulos, Paul. Paul means, this is, means a little man. Actually, very humble name, little man. So the Paul name is a Greek name that is missionary name, I will say that. Like myself, when I am in Korea, my name is Hwang Yong Hyun. That's a Korean name. Okay. But when I travel outside in the mission field, no one would call me Hwang Yong Hyun. What is my missionary name? Thomas Huang. Even the last name comes to the like, you know, end. Thomas Huang. In the, I, I, I apply this to my own life as I have learned from Paul's life. Okay? So it is my advice to you you should have Korean name for the sake of your, I would say, missionary uh, attitude. Have you got your own Korean name? No. You better have one Korean name. Okay? Just like your children have Korean name. Now, here again. Now, as you know, Paul expressed himself in the letter of Philippians. Philippians. In Philippians 3 5, he said to Philippians that, My brothers and sisters in Philippi, you know, in the Jewish community, my religious sect is I am a Pharisee. Pharisee means very very conservative, 
okay? Very conservative uh, Judaism sect. Within the Judaism, you know, there are four sets, four different, uh, you know, meaning a sect. Sect means four different groups. In a simple word, in the Judaism, first is Pharisees. Pharisees is a very, I would say, powerful and also conservative group. And in terms of numbers, the greatest number, numbers are great, and then most of them are very high level uh, political group. Majority, the Sanhedrin members. Sanhedrin means it's a parliament. Okay, majority parliament members belong to Pharisees. Therefore, they are power holders. In that sense, Paul was proud of himself that yes, I am a member of Pharisees high level. Okay, the Pharisees. Is Pharisees and as conservative people, and also second level is what Sadducees. Sadducees is very liberal people, liberal Sadducees. Less numbers, but they are also a lot of a second powerful people within the member of parliament. Member of Parliament. Okay, so others was others is a zealot, and 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 all others too. But you don't have to know that. Only you have to know that Pharisees is very proud and powerful group. So he bragged himself that I am Pharisees. Philippians three five. Okay, not only that. He said that, he said, I am, I am, in terms of tribe, Benjamin tribe, Benjamin tribe, Philippians 3, 5, tribe of Benjamin, because it's a Benjamin is what? Benjamin is the last son of, out of 12 sons of Jacob, right? So Benjamin was the most uh, loved son okay, of Jacob. And also, Benjamin tribes are always near the Jerusalem area. They were royal and mostly cared, mostly, I would say, a, a respected and loved the tribe out of 12 tribes. With that sense, Paul proud, okay, boasted himself that I am Pharisees, also I am Benjamin tribe. Okay? So all this that before I, before my conversion, I came from this kind of background, he said. Okay? I am from Tarsus, and I'm a graduate of what? University of Tarsus. And also, I am a disciple of who? Gamaliel. Not only that, I am from Benjamin tribes. I am also Pharisees. So everything is respected in terms of okay, his position. However, this man was a most active anti-Christian person and anti-church person. Out of many uh, Jewish people, many Jewish high-positioned member of parliament, and many academic people whatsoever, 
This man was the top man who stood against Jerusalem church and church members. It was God's design. Later, you will see, later, because of this, because of this, it was God's plan. Jesus tried to make him humble spirit man. Humble spirit man. So he always telling uh, people that I am the sinner of all sinners, he said, all the time, because of this. Until he dies. Until he dies. He always say, I am the worst man. Killing Christians and destroyed Jerusalem church. So, I am here by the grace of God. Only nothing but his grace. I am now a servant of Jesus. Because I was a uh, enemy of Jesus makes made him what some all the time humble humble see this is the key this is the key element uh, for the servant of Jesus humble without the humility God cannot use him so in order to make him such a proud man, a humble servant of God, it was God's plan to make him a very strong anti-Christian and anti-church man to make him humble. God, it was God's plan. It was God's plan. Even he actively among those Persecutors, he was actively in the, in the front line, killed Stephen. Stephen, Acts 7 58 said, Saul was there. Saul, he was killing, he was a Stephen killer of Stephen, the first martyrdom in the Christian history, okay, New Testament history. First martyrdom. But Paul took part in that God's plan. Not only that, Paul was a, was a leader in dispersing and persecuting and dispersing Jerusalem church members. Okay? Out of that, his persecution and dispersing, here in Acts chapter 8, verse 3, he said, Acts chapter 8, verse 3, Okay, these church members, Jerusalem church members, had scattered around all Judea, Samaria, Syria, and entire Turkey. Entire Turkey. Okay, it was uh, God's plan. Why? Because, you know, God told in Acts 1 8, in Acts 1 8, to Jerusalem leaders, you better, okay, when you receive the Holy Spirit and you will be scattered around these areas in order to be my witness. But, but, Jerusalem church did not. Did not obey Acts 1 8. They, they were settling down in their city, okay, busy with all church matters, forgetting Acts 1 8. So, to fulfill the Acts 1 8, God, our Jesus, okay, employed Saul as a church persecutor. And because of Saul's persecution, the church was mandatory, okay, con compelled to uh, go over those areas. Okay? It was God's design. So without 
Paul's persecution, the church could not be uh, obeying that commission of Jesus. Isn't it interesting? Okay. So he, Paul, played as a key missionary role even before the conversion. That was my understanding. Let me make in my conclusion here first 30 years of his life was the preparation period. Okay? Not as a Christian, as an anti Christian person. Preparing for pastorship, future, preparing for missionary work, preparing for writer, academic excellency, preparing for servant of Jesus. Okay. He start, God gave him in the Hebrew language and Greek language in a very academic way, able to write the Bible. Other disciples of Jesus could not do that. But this man was academically well prepared okay, in writing his at least 13 letters. All are uh, academic letters. So it was God's preparation. Peter could not. Other people could not as, as good as uh, Paul. Because Paul was prepared. And not only that, he was practiced before his conversion leadership. See, even anti-Christian movement, anti-church movement, he was taking the leadership so this man was a leader. Okay? So it was all prepared by Jesus okay, during the first 30 years before his conversion. See? So preparation period and also because of his bad behaviors shown to Christian community, this man was so humble man, humble spirit, always keeping his humility, okay? In spite of his ministerial expansions covering entire Roman Empire, southern part of empire, but he was always keeping, it was by the grace of God, he has kept the, the spirit of humility because of Thinking of his past history, he said, Oh, it is nothing but the grace of God who made me like this, even before his death. This is just the beginning of Paul's early life story. I will continue in the next lecture. Are you with me? Hallelujah. May God bless all of you, those who are watching these uh, videos. In Jesus' name, amen.